everything you wanted to know before booking that very first ocean cruise. Stay tuned. To help us today with first-time Ocean Cruise FAQs is my guest, Tim Hirsch of Cruise Holidays of Topeka, located in Topeka, Kansas. Together with his wife, Denise, they specialize in ocean and river cruise vacations and have been meeting the needs of satisfied clients in and around Topeka and across the country for quite a number of years. Hi, Tim. Welcome back to RTE Travel Talk. Thank you, Ken, for having me today. It's great to have you back with us, Tim. So, Tim, You've been in this business now for quite a number of years. And one of the things that we're starting, we, we get a lot and we haven't talked about much here on RTE Travel Talk is questions for people that perhaps haven't cruised before. First, they're going to be a first time cruiser and, you know, they're asking us questions. And quite often, because you've cruised a lot and I've cruised a lot, it's kind of things that we don't think about anymore. But you as a travel mm-hmm. advisor, I'm sure you get them all the time. So I was hoping today that we could go through a bunch of questions in quick quick succession just to provide a little bit of more information for folks. How does that sound? That'd be great. Uh, I think one of the things that we're, you know, really seeing is people, the industry's uh, kind of driving people back to travel advisors just because of all the questions they have. But I think the things I want people to know is as clients, you know, you don't just have us as advisors when you book a trip and get a reservation that we're with you when you book it, all the preparation leading up to it while you're on the trip. And then we follow up after the trip. So, you know, you have an advocate all the way through this process. So it doesn't just end when you book the trip. We're with you all the way till you come back home. From start to finish. Let's get started. First question I've got from a client is, you know, in this day and age, do I need to pack formal wear or tuxedo these days? Right now, most of the cruise lines have moved away from any formal nights that they have. But most of the time we're talking, if there is a formal night, uh, it'll be khakis and a collared shirt. Now, there are clients that still want to dress up in suit and tie or tuxedo, and that's great. You're not going to be out of place if that happens. Um, it's all mostly up to the client whether they want to uh, take that attire or not. Okay, so it, it's much more casual than it used to be. Yeah, the, the only exception would be luxury cruises uh, because uh, of the clientele on the ship. Well, it is a little bit more formal on those types of cruises. Okay, good to know, good to know. So when I'm up here during the summer, I'm a bit of a beach bum and I'm always hauling my towels. Mm-hmm. Do I have to um, bring packed towels and stuff if I'm heading off on a cruise? No, you don't really. The cruise lines kind of discourage that for one, because it just uh, it creates more, you know, packing for you. Okay. But most all the cruise lines will provide towels around the pool. If you go on shore excursions, you know, that's something they provide into your uh, either in your cabin or they'll provide around the pool, even as you go off the ship to an excursion. Now, one of the other things that I've come across is Deb and I are now starting to travel light and almost travel carry-on in some cases. Now, having said Mm -hmm. that, on a longer cruise, you can run into, well, what am I going to do with these dirty clothes? Is there laundry service on board most of the cruise ships these days? Yes, there is. Uh, Most of the cruise lines have laundry services for a fee. Uh, If you're going on river cruises or some of those, they, they might include that benefit in with your cruise fare. When you go into your cabin in your closet, you're going to have a bag in there that's going to have, uh, you'll be able to put your clothes in there, put an itemized listing of all of them, and that's wash and press that they'll do. And then you'll send that out. And then the following day, it'll be back into your cabin, usually folded onto your bed. But most all of the cruise lines do have a type of laundry service on them for a fee. Oh, perfect. Oh, perfect. Now, I know in this day and age, we're in a bit of a cashless society. I hardly ever carry cash, but I know when we go on shore and excursions, sometimes I like to, you know, I'll like to have a little bit of cash on hand to tip people or there may be a particular vendor that I don't want to use my credit card at. Now, having said that, is there a safe in in your stateroom that at nighttime you can secure your cash and possibly your passports and important travel documents? Yeah, most cruise lines have a safe they provide in the cabins. And, you know, I would not be walking around with a big wad of cash. (laughs) The ship is a cashless venue. Now, The other $64,000 question, and I hear quite often, is can I bring my own alcohol on board? Yeah, most of the cruise lines will allow you to bring 
one to six bottles of wine, okay. but most just uh, will prohibit any hard liquor. Now, when you go to different ports, based on the, uh, the, the vendor, the cruise line will allow you to buy hard liquor on there as long as it's consumed, you know, in your cabin. But that's something that you would get with your travel advisor about to okay. clarify that. Uh, almost all the river cruise lines will allow you to buy and bring it onto the ship. If you do bring that wine with you, there uh, usually is a corkage fee okay. uh, if you get to the table for dinner. Uh, you also have the option on some cruise lines to bring a 12-pack of beer or they'll allow you to bring pop. Uh, and some cruise lines even allow that you can request, I want Dr. Pepper, I want something in my room, and they'll provide that on a cruise lines such as Oceana. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Once I get on board, Tim, how do I know what activities are available on a day-to-day -day basis on, on the ship or, or, or in particular the ports we're heading to? Well, there's things that are kind of changing in that respect. It used to be you would always get an activity sheet right. That would go either under your room or uh, in, in uh, on your door. Uh, the other thing is I noticed they're starting to move away from printing out those activity sheets. And they're starting to put it on the vendor app on the, your phone. Okay. I believe probably by the end of this year, there won't be any physical activity sheets it'll all be downloaded onto the app on your on your phone. Right on, right on. So the app, the app is where it's at. That's going to become more and more the primary way that we do things on the ship is through that app, even eventually probably becoming your key card. Okay. Okay, sounds good. So one of the things I I love I love to do when I go on board is eat. And but what about those folks that may possibly have a diet restriction? How do the one how do the cruise lines handle that? One of the things we do when we set up your cruise with the reservation is we're going to tell them whether you have any dietary restrictions, whether there's any mobility issues. So that's going to be on your reservation. And then uh, we recommend people, if there are concerns like that, when they go into the restaurant the very first day, they just let the maitre d' know that, you know, there's uh, I have some restrictions on this and they, they will accommodate you and they will remember the next time you come you know, what, uh, what restrictions there are. And there, there is a lot of options when it comes to that. Right. I've seen that firsthand with guests at our table from time to time. So they, they do mm -hmm. a really good job. Yeah and, it's, yeah. and it's really important. So speaking of guests at the table, do I have to d dine with strangers? No, nope. you can, you have the option of dining with just two people at a table or when you go in there, you can request to be at a table of four, six, eight, or 12 people. Right. And the nice thing about that is it's a way to get to know people. You also have the option of say you're at a table with somebody that, you know, is maybe a, a challenge to you <laughs> that you can always switch to another table. And there's no problem with that. that that's kind of the unique thing about how they do dining on the cruise ships is you have all kinds of flexibility on how you want to dine. Right on, right on. Go to the regular buffet if you want to go to a specialty dining. Uh, there's restaurants on there that are for a fee that are just Italian. You know, uh, they have uh, steak houses. They have all different types of food for a fee. And uh, those are kind of, they call them specialty restaurants because uh, they're going to specialize in whatever type of food they have. Right on. Now, speaking of speaking of that, there's an old joke going around that on a cruise, you go on as passengers and come off as cargo. Is it still all you can eat? <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, you're not only unlimited on what you can eat, which is included in your cruise fare, uh, but the times you eat too. They have uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and there are even uh, restaurants that are open Till as late as one, two o'clock in the morning. Wow. I noticed on a couple of cruise wow. lines, they even have on Norwegian, they have a 24 hour pub that has uh, appetizers on there. Now, how does that work with the specialty restaurants, Tim? Do they, um, when, are they all you can eat as well? They are all you can eat because you're paying one fee for the whole evening's dining. And it could be anywhere from two to six course meals. Right. And that's something that you want to do ahead of time because those times and uh, the restaurants fill up fast. So what I recommend to people is when they set up their cruise planner that they go on and do specialty dining and get your shore excursions 
scheduled right there and that's something that we help them with okay so if i so if i understand you correctly on that with the specialty restaurants it can be as much as a six course meal which is great but during that six course meal if there was a particular course that you really liked you could have seconds you bet wow what's the story on internet on board is there internet on board the ships these days and are there packages available how does that work tim you can either purchase that uh, in advance on the website on your cruise planner, some uh, promotions include it. Okay. And they right. they will tell you on the first day you get on the ship, you can go down to uh, customer service, uh, and they will tell you how to log on, how to log off, set it up on your. It'll be on your app. Okay. Yeah, Wi-Fi has become more and more of a of a uh, a, a service that they're providing, and the speed of it is getting better all the time. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So you, we talked earlier about uh, shore excursions. Is it best to book your shore excursions before you, you go, or should I wait till I get on board? They do keep back a certain amount of shore excursions for people who don't book them. Right. But I will right. tell you, I advise all my clients to book your shore excursions uh, just as soon as they're available on your reservation, because they, they will sell out. And what's right. important to remember about shore excursions is you want to book those through the cruise line. Two major reasons why. One is... Uh, that they provide the transportation to and from your shore excursion where a third party may not. The other thing is if you leave the ship and you've booked that shore excursion uh, with the cruise line, if you don't come back to the ship and the ship is scheduled to leave, they will not leave without you. If you book it through a third party and you don't come back to the ship, they're leaving. What happens if I get left behind? Do people get left behind? Will it, will yes, will the they ship do. Sail? The ship will sail without you. So long story short, they're not going to, they're not, you're on your own. They're not going to wait. Right. And that that's why I say that's the advantage of doing the shore excursions through them. Right. Because if you don't come back because one of the vendors had a flat tire, the car broke down or whatever, they're not going to leave until they figure out where you're at because you booked it through them. Well, that would kind of make sense because when you think about it, if it's the cruise line shore excursion and that that particular vendor that they that they've got hired has a flat tire he's probably got he could have as many as 15 or 20 people from the ship so yes correct so that, but even if it's one because it's through them they're going to wait correct let's talk about just cruising around in the caribbean do i need a passport mm -hmm. if i'm going to do that it depends on what kind of cruise that you go on okay. a cruise that leaves a port in the u.s and returns to that same port is called a closed loop cruise. Okay. And if you go on a closed loop cruise that starts in Miami, ends in Miami, you can use a driver's license and a birth certificate. You don't need a passport. The exception to that is if it leaves Miami and then it returns in Los Angeles, you will need a passport for that. It has to start and end at the same U.S. port for you to be able to use a driver's license and a, and a birth certificate. Okay. We advise all our clients to just use a passport. And the reason is, uh, even if it's not required on a closed loop cruise, if you, the ship would be disabled in the Caribbean and you need, you have to get off that ship and make your way back to the U S on a plane, they're going to require you to have a passport. So it just makes good, good, good sense. If you're traveling by cruise, have a passport. Yeah, correct. Okay. The kids, if we want to take the kids, there's no way I'm having them in my room. Can you book adjoining rooms? <laughs> yeah, you can. Uh, connecting rooms are a real priority with families. Right. And also one of the things we've started to do to kind of help with costs is a family of four, if they don't want to put everybody in one cabin, which is really tight. Right. Uh, they'll get a balcony cabin and then we can find them an inside cabin right across the hall. Okay. So they'll put one adult uh, in the in one cabin, one adult in the other one with the, with the kids. Now, the kids can sleep in that inside, you know, once you get on the ship. But, you know, the way you're going to have to uh, do the reservation, there always has to be an adult in there. If you get a adjoining room that that requirement isn't there okay let me mention one other thing because this happened to me if you're a grandparent taking your grandkids right. the cruise lines do require a form that you they need permission from the parents and there's a form to fill out for that 
for those kid grandkids to be able to go with the grandparents. Okay. And, and uh, you know, we can work that out at the cruise port by just faxing that form to the parents and have the parents sign it and fax it straight back to the cruise port. But it's uh, a lot less complicated if you take care of those details ahead of time. Yeah, and you you know you don't want to have to have to deal with that in a rush at, at a cruise port if you can avoid it. And speaking of grandma, we're thinking thinking of doing a multi generational cruise, and most elderly parents ha- can have medical issues that they kind of have to deal with on a day to day basis. What is the situation for folks that you know may have elderly? guests with them with medications that they have to sort or if they happen mm-hmm. to get sick on board. You never you never want bad things to happen on board, Tim, but if I run into some sort of a problem while I'm on board, who do you go to see to help to get help? All the cruise ships have a full service uh, medical clinic, mm-hmm. which would be similar to a medicist. So they all have a full medical staff uh, on on the ship to be able to address uh, anything from a heart attack to a broken leg they can deal with any of those uh, emergencies. Okay, okay. Now, normally when Deb and I have cruised in the past, we always made it a point to arrive at the port the day before, just to be on the safe side, because we're coming a long way by air. The very first time we did cruise, we flew in and got on the ship the same day, which was nice. What would happen to him? What happens if I do happen to miss the sailing time, either by my flights delayed or for some other reason. First thing you're going to do is call me yeah. and then I'm going to keep you calm down. <laughs> and then I'm going to, we'll, we'll come up with a strategy of what we're going to do. We just had this happen where we had some people going to Vancouver uh, on Alaska cruise. They got delayed in Chicago, totally missed. So they're connecting flights. So we had to have them stay a night in Chicago. They had to fly the next day to Seattle, stay there. And then we got them on a flight to catch a can where they in a hotel there and they stayed there until the ship got to that port. Once again, the absolute great value of have a travel advisor in your corner, because if that happens, you know, you're number one, you're already stressed. So if you just can just start mm-hmm. make one phone call and you're talking to somebody who's not stressed and knows what buttons to push to get action happening to get you to the next port. That's so much easier, right? Yeah. I had a lady who was stuck in Chicago and was flying to Oahu, Hawaii. She was getting ready to get on the plane. I said, get on the plane. Don't worry about it. When you land and turn your phone on, you'll have the hotel you're going to be at. I'll have transportation waiting there at the airport to take you. And I've already got a flight booked for you from Oahu to Maui so you can catch the ship the next day. (laughs) That's wonderful. Well, Tim, this is really super information for the first time cruiser. Is there anything else you like might like to add before we wrap up? Well, I just want people to know that when you, it could be intimidating to book a cruise, but the most cruise lines have been doing cruising for decades. It might seem intimidating of just thinking about a cruise, but that's why if you used a trusted travel advisor, We're going to make sure that when you leave uh, whatever uh, city you leave from, you're not going to have any uh, issues with uh, with the adventure. Perfect. Perfect. So, Tim, if folks wanted to find out more information about booking a cruise or booking a cruise directly with you, what's the best way to get hold of you? The best way is just to uh, email uh, at cruise holidays and or you can email me directly at Tim at cruisexcel.com. Or call us on the phone, 785-271-9889, and we book from all over the country. We also do tours, and we also do uh, resorts. Excellent, excellent. All right, my friend. Well, with that, I'm just going to wish you safe and happy travels on all your future cruises and adventures. May the wind always be at your back, and I hope to see you and Denise on the Lido deck sometime soon. Thank you so much, Ken. Have a great day. Take care. And that about wraps it up for today, folks. A very special thanks to my guest, Tim Hurst of Cruise Holidays of Topeka. If you'd like to reach Tim, I'll leave his contact information in the description. If you'd like to reach us, simply send a question to questions at realtravelexperts.com, visit our website, realtravelexperts.com, or leave a comment. We always respond. And as always, folks, if you enjoyed this content, a like, subscribe, and a ring of the bell is certainly appreciated and helps us to spread the word. So until next time, happy travels.